here. So welcome to the weekly webinar. Uh, this is one that I've been wanting to uh, get into for a long uh, time. As, as all of you know, uh, we've been going through the sales techniques um, in this module, and we've gone through a lot of different uh, aspects of sales, which has been really good. Uh, it's been a it's been a great um, uh, review of sales skills and things like that. But one of the things, and I think my screen is a little is a little imbalanced here. I will get that fixed. Don't worry about that. Um, one of the things that I think is important to think about with sales is how we got how we get to the close. That's what we're talking about today. How we get to the close as real estate agents and brokers. Um, if you've been following along, if you've you've been taking uh, your agent broker blueprint, you know, in this module, we start off at the very beginning when you're you're just farming uh, a prospect, even before that. We actually start off with the history of sales, which is uh, always an interesting uh, thing. But the idea that you uh, get to the closing part where you're you're stop you're not selling anymore, you're closing, um, is really really uh, important for people that. Uh, want to make sure that they're getting a listing agreement, that they want to make sure that they're, they're representing that buyer. You're going to have to close sooner or later as a real estate agent and broker. By the way, this is never talked about in, in uh, training. It's not talked about in real estate school. It's not talked about with most brokerages. I'm not putting any other brokerage down. But real estate agents and brokers need to know how to sell. And if you can get these skills down as a skill set, you're going to be you're going to be slaying it out there in your particular market. So it's really really important that you know this skill set. Today's topic is closing, and more importantly, I've come up with what I feel like are the five greatest uh, closing. Uh, statements or techniques that that a real estate agent and broker could use. There's more than that, but these, if you know these five and you you use these as your foundation, I really think you're going to be in really good shape. Um, it, most people don't even get this far. Just prior to this, we were talking about the trial close. That's uh, the technique that you use to gauge or or take the temperature, if you will, of your prospect, uh, whether it's a buyer, remember, buy, sell, rent, that's our prospects. Uh, if it's a buyer, if it's a seller, if it's someone looking for a rental, um, you're, you're, you're gauging with the prospect on um, how close they are to be closed. Are they ready to be closed? If, if they're not ready, you got to go back and do some steps ahead of that. This video, this this particular segment is about, hey, they're ready to go. You've done a trial close. They're asking a buying question. Boom, we clamp down and we close them. So that's what this is about. So the close you should uh, really base uh, your um, uh, what you know about the prospect and the type of close you believe will be the most persuasive in closing that client or closing that prospect that's across from you. Um, the type of, of close is going to have a big um, outcome of the deal, a big outcome of the deal. So I wanted to give you, you know, four or five closing techniques that I think are perfect for the real estate agent. Um, not a lot of people use these. Matter of fact, the one, the really, really good agents that use these are uh, are really good. Are really good. These are the, you know, million dollar plus producers. The mom and pops, the, the you know, the the people that are doing this kind of as a hobby, um, aren't aren't using these at all. They have no idea what this is, and this is the exact thing that's going to separate you guys uh, from everything else. So let me go over three, four, five of these that I think are perfect for the real estate. Uh, agent broker. The first one is called the assumptive close. Let me explain what that is. 
this technique involves uh, using a phrase or language that assumes that the close is a done deal. Um, for example, you could close with, you know, what day do you want me to put the for sale sign in your yard and take pictures of the house? That would be a, I like that one, by the way, that's probably the one I use more often than anything else or, or Heather actually uses it more than I do now. Anyway, I used to use it a lot more, but that's the one that I would go with. It was the assumptive close because it's just like this smooth over of what's going to happen next. Um, notice, uh, I was doing a training yesterday and I was talking about the importance of, um, not talking about the details of the sale, but more importantly, talking about the confirmation of what's happening next. It's kind of like the assumptive sale or the assumptive close, sorry, <clears throat> in, un, in understanding exactly what's going to happen next. This assumptive close, when you say, you know, what day is best for you to, to have me put the for sale sign in your yard and take pictures of the house is a smooth over. over. You're confirming what's going to happen next. And let's be honest, the prospect or the seller, buy, sell, buy, sell, rent, uh, may not have even realize what's going on. Sometimes people need to be directed. Sometimes in a closing pro process, especially with the real estate, because they don't really know what's happening. They don't really kind of understand, um, you know, all the details about real estate transactions and how you get them closed and listing contracts and leases and all that stuff. But you do. And you're the expert. And that's why it's important for you to take the lead and that's why it's important or, or interesting that this particular close, the assumptive close that you're assuming the deal is already done, is really, really important for the real estate agent and broker. Um, use this as a foundation. This would be a, a big one. You could do this with others. Like uh, you could make another assumptive close. Like, um, hey, would five o'clock be okay for me to come over and bring the listing contract if you don't already have one there? Um, or, you know, anything where you're assuming that next step and you're confirming actually is a better way to say that, that next step in the prospect's mind, in the buy, sell, uh, rent, uh, mind of the person there, uh, especially if they don't know the process here, they are going to follow your lead. They're going to follow exactly what you do, uh, to make this happen. So the assumptive close for a real estate agent and broker is one of the is one of the main ones that you should be going with. So um, early on in my career, uh, I was uh, in sales and I was in the environmental industry. Some of you know this, some of you don't. Um, and one of my biggest one of my biggest um, sales days, like uh, I, I'm trained, uh, I'm uh, way back in the day, I, I when I graduated college in the early 90s, I, maybe I'm dating myself. I think this beard is dating myself, actually, maybe. But early, in the early 90s, I got trained um, in the Xerox sales uh, skills. Uh, some of you may not remember that. Some of you might. I don't want to point anybody out. But uh, it's a really good sales program. Xerox had a really good sales program. So did IBM uh, back in the day. Uh, but I learned these foundations that I'm giving you guys from there. They're timeless. Uh, you know, it, and all these things that I talk about with seller psychology and things like that, all of these things are used in these closing processes and really in this module uh, as a whole. But this next closing technique um, was the first one that I learned. And I'll never forget, I was in a sales appointment at Owens Corning. I was so nervous because it was a huge account. And by the way, having the coffee this morning, it's uh, not Dunkin' Donuts, but it's, it's baby's coffee. You, you guys know I'm a coffee fiend in the morning. So I'm at Owens Corning. <clears throat> I'm walking through the factory. It's my biggest potential account. I'm nervous. Um, I'm, I, the plant manager comes out, greets me in the lobby, uh, walks me through the factory and he looks down at my shoes 
and he tells me, he goes, hey, I see you got on two different pairs of shoes. And I was like, you know what? I look down and I've got a red loafer, penny loafer, you know, a burgundy and a black penny loafer, black, two different pairs of shoes on <clears throat> or a, a different shoe on each foot. And for most people, that would be the thing that would crush them in a sales scenario. Uh, not for me. I was so nervous uh, at being at this account. That was the least of my problems. Uh, I remember on this, I used <clears throat> this, um, this uh, technique that I'm about to give you. It's called the option close. And... Uh, that's what got the deal. I'll never forget the first time that I used this because of that. I had two different shoes on. So what the option close is, you guys are probably still laughing. The fact that I was wearing two different shoes, the option close, uh, is really similar to the assumption close, but rather than asking for a prospect's business directly, you ask them, uh, which option they prefer. Uh, for example, you could close with, um, you know, do you want to sign the listing agreement on Thursday or Friday? Um, do you want me to send my guy out to take pictures of the house uh, at one o'clock or four o'clock tomorrow? That type of thing. That's an option close. It's very similar to um, the assumptive close, but um, you're really uh, the biggest thing again is not you're not asking for the business directly like you are in the assumptive close. You're asking, uh, giving them an option. Once they answer that with one of those two answers, then um, you can assume, if you will, that you've got that closed. That's really we go back to those questions that we ask during the sales process. There's several. There's a closed-ended question, an open-ended question, a reflective question, a buying question, you know, all these things. That, my friends, in the option close is a closed-ended sales question. And so you're, 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 um, there's ways that you can apply pressure in the sales process. Uh, this is a way that you can do that by giving them an option, one or two. In other words, we're not giving them an option to get out of the deal. We're giving them an option to choose one or two. You don't care which one they choose. They're both good for you. Uh, but uh, I find that very useful as a tool as well, to use that options close um, when appropriate. <clears throat> okay, so number three, this is uh, another foundational closing technique that you're going to want to have in your uh, repertoire if you will, in your toolbox, in your tool belt, uh, if you will. And this is the what we call the suggestion close. As an agent and a broker, um, you've got a lot of power or a lot of influence over your particular client because you're licensed. You're the professional. You know your market better than anybody else. So giving brief light, and maybe sometimes heavy suggestions go a long way. It's kind of like you've earned the right. I was actually talking about this in a, a training webinar I did yesterday. You've earned the right to be able to do this. Think about a doctor. When you go into the doctor's office and you've got an ailment of such, um, you are uh, the doctor has earned the right to ask you questions about that ailment because of the school he went to, how long he was in school, the or she, uh, the experience they have, the certificates on the wall, things like that. They've earned the right. You've earned the right to be asking these questions uh, in this process because you're licensed, you're experienced, you're a real estate agent, you know the market, that type of thing. So if you have good rapport with uh, your particular prospect, and they view you as the trusted expert, which they should. And by the way, this is why <clears throat> this is why I I hark on everybody that I know to be doing things like this, to be developing your email list, to, which is kind of falling out of preference. But to be doing videos every time you close a property, do a video every time you 
you have success with a client, do a video. Heck, every time you do a, have a failure, do a video. Start your YouTube channel. Start your, your um, you know, other social media outlets. It's so important because you can position yourself as the trusted expert in your market. And when you do that, this suggest, uh, suggestion close becomes uh, maybe your best tool in this box if you're the expert. So again, um, if you're viewed as the trusted expert, a suggestion close is a really good approach. You could close with uh, this. Um, Based on what you've told me about your problem with the house, I would suggest that we list that at 185000 or better yet, 184999 or 990 And, um, you know, we get that paperwork uh, signed so that we could put that on the market by uh, Thursday. You know, Thursday is the best day to list properties, studies have shown. Um, does that work for you? You see, what I'm doing there is before I ask that final question, I'm giving my expertise. This is where the suggestion close. You're giving a suggestion on what to do. Um, and by the way, the days of the week are important. If you go on the, by the way, I don't know if you guys are on the Anton Facebook page. You should go on there. A few weeks back, I was putting on all these stats on when is the best day to list a property? When is the worst day to list a property? What gets the most hits? What gets the most exposure? And and Thursday was a really good day. Um, I think Sunday was the worst day, by the way. Uh, But go on there and look at that. Um, Give yourself some ammunition to when you're sitting down with people and you're saying stuff like that. (coughs) Excuse me. When you're saying stuff like that, like, Hey, Thursday is the best day to lift, list properties. Did you know that? Studies have shown uh, that, in, name the source, Redfin, um, the National Association of Realtors, which is where I think I got mine from. Uh, name the source because you become the expert like the source. And so the suggestive close is real important when you put yourself in a position where you're, you're uh, giving a suggestion on what to do and then cl- ending that suggestion with, hey, does this work for you? How does that sound to you? You ready to get started? You know, that type of thing. That's how you need to do that. So the third close I would recommend, only if you feel like you're a trusted expert or if you know these people uh, very well, buy, sell, rent, those are your clients, um, is to use this close. And you'll know, this really has more to do with rapport and has more to do with uh, how well they know you and, and how they, um, and how they view, uh, you, uh, is a really good way to say that. So there's, there's three right there. <clears throat> Let me go to, uh, to a couple more here, uh, just a couple more. Cause I think these are real, uh, important. If you can nail these four or five and, in, and add a few more, uh, down the road, you're going to be awesome out in the field. I'm telling you, you're going to close more deals with this. You, you as an agent broker is going to close more deals. Number four, uh, number four is something called the urgency close. Um, this is real. This is real important. Uh, but I don't. Um, you want to use. You don't want to use this all the time because this is kind of like the the boy who cried wolf. A little bit, but creating a sense of urgency places pressure on the prospect. And we talked about placing pressure on the the prospect, your client or prospective client, before. This is a good thing, you know. In the sales process and going through that spin model, you you apply pressure on the prospect by talking about their problem. When a house needs to be sold, there's a problem to solve. When somebody needs to buy a house, there's a problem to solve. You want to kind of exploit that problem a little bit, adding pressure, adding stress, uh, you know, getting those cortisol levels uh, uh, increased, and then you want to apply that solution so that uh, you change the chemistry 
um, in their uh, in their brain. OK, so, uh, d- you know, and when that happens, of course, you go from cortisol to dopamine. And then when they ask that buying question, you go to what adrenaline for you, the salesperson, the real estate agent, the broker. Uh, so this is real important. Number four, the urgency close, creating a sense of urgency places pressure on the prospect to make a decision, especially if, if you have identified that the client needs to make a decision quickly and um, is working on a short timeline. You can create this yourself. You can really make sure that this is something that you are creating uh, yourself. You can create the timeline by painting a picture or having them create a movie in their head. Um, Let's say that the client wants to move to Florida and they live in Indiana. That sounds familiar. That's me. I'm going to be moving to Florida here soon. But I live in Indiana, and I want to move there uh, before the next school year, right? So the next school year starts in September. Uh, It is now uh, almost May. And I want to get my house sold so that I can move down to to, uh, Key West, Florida, and uh, start my son in school. You could make that more of an urgent situation um, with your client only if you have that that knowledge. Okay. Um, however, uh, remember this is think of this as a limited time offer, but use this sparingly. You don't want to be the guy that, that is going around crying wolf. You, you don't also just from a compliance standpoint. You don't want to use this. Uh, in a in any kind of redlining uh, situation, you guys know that. However, I think you want to be careful in using it with economic changes uh, that are going on, uh, or, or at least use it sparingly. Uh, you don't want to overdo it because uh, you could be, uh, you know, kind of pigeonholed in a, a situation kind of similar to the boy who called uh, Wolf as well. <clears throat> so. Um, again, this closing technique should be used occasionally by the experienced uh, real estate agent who you really have a, a stronger relationship with. But uh, again, sparingly is probably the key uh, with that one. <clears throat> and then the fifth one, we'll leave it to five today because I think these five are, are going to be the most impact for you. The, the fifth one is called the direct close. And uh, this takes a traditional route to closing a deal, and it really does have uh, its benefits. Um, as long as you're confident in your client, um, uh, and the, your client understands the value the home brings to their life, and and how it caters to their needs, uh, really pose uh, more of a direct question to them. And this is this is how the direct close would work. So you might say, um, uh, "So Carlos, are you ready to make this your new home?" And uh, what's important about that question and that direct close is it's not the question itself that's so important. It's the build up to that question. So, um, you know, for instance, one of the trial close questions I would ask is, hey, I mean, it sounds like you like this house. Could you see your family spending uh, time in the backyard or, or spending time in the the kitchen family room together and get that client talking a little bit about what they see in their mind, the the movie that they're playing questions like uh, these uh, from a direct close question. So Carlos, are you ready to make this your new home are again, closed ended questions and will be answered with a yes or no. Uh, Don't forget those several types of questions that we use. These are really your tools in your toolbox. And so this quite particular question is going to be answered with a yes or no. And if you've provided your prospective client with the confidence needed uh, for the sale, they're most likely going to say yes if they like that properties. Um, and, you know, I always kind of remind people that there's no magic uh, words in um that you're, you're going to guarantee a sale with all of these. <clears throat> but these closing lines and questions can definitely increase your chances of 
having you know a valuable, meaningful, persuasive conversation. That's what you're doing as a real estate agent um, with your client. It's important to always provide the opportunity to rectify a situation, uh, address a concern, and demonstrate how you know maybe. Uh, this particular property is perfect for them, or this particular situation with selling their property is going to be ideal for them. Or if this, if you're renting a place for somebody, how that's going to be ideal uh, for them as well. So again, these are the five basic ones. These are the foundation ones I think you should have. Um, you know, the assumptive close, the options close, the uh, suggestion close, the urgency close, and uh, just the direct close, being direct. Uh, if you know these, you're going to be in a really good shape. Uh, it's everything that builds up to this, though. Uh, so where do we go from here? So once you uh, use these closing techniques, something happens. Something, uh, uh, your client, your buy-sell rent, your client, your prospect reacts to this closing statement or this closing technique. It's basically yes, no, or maybe. And um, you're, what we're going to talk about next in next week's webinar is what to do in those cases. Um, so what we're talking about here is uh, not so much yes, we know what to do there, but no or maybe uh, where it's an objection or a condition. We're going to go through that. You're going to know what to do, know exactly what to say instinctively so that you get that close. Not every uh, deal is going to work smoothly where, where um, you're, everyone's going to say, yes, a good salesperson, a good real estate agent and broker is going to work this sale. And so when you get an objection, you're going to know how to handle it. And you're also going to understand what the difference is between an objection and a condition. There is a difference. And prospects will say things all the time, uh, not, you know, really kind of understanding what they're doing in the process. They might say a condition and you're going to take it as an objection and you could, you could handle that wrong or the, the reverse would be uh, the situation. You may handle that wrong. So we want to we wanna identify those. We want to talk exactly what to do when an objection comes up or a condition comes up and what to do with that so you get that closed. That, my friends, is the training for today. Um, we're a little bit shorter today, but that's okay. I think it was a powerful uh, 30 minutes here. Um, remember, uh, wealth has nothing to do with money. Success has everything to do with failure, and life is as simple as you want to make it. Uh, reach out to me if you need anything. We will be here. Good luck. And we will talk to you next week on the webinar. Thanks a lot, everyone.